All right, this is Amar Shah. And Amar Shah says, greetings, Dr. Tyson, Lord Nice. This is Amar from Sydney, Australia. Is it possible mathematically that our universe is on the other side of a black hole? And could there be more universes on the other sides of black holes? I think, does, does he mean our galaxy? Because I have a book on the shelf that goes through the mathematics of what's on the other side of a black of hole. Of a black hole. Right. Right. And if you fall in, your time slows down relative to what you just came from. Right. And you'll see the entire future history of the, of universe, the universe unfold. Right. As you go down and emerge, a whole other space time opens up in front of you. I gotcha. The mathematics of general relativity gives you that. Right. Uh, no one has tested this, but general relativity works in all these other ways. And this is a prediction of something that has worked so well. Mm -hmm. It's intriguing. Certainly worthy of at least sci-fi treatment right. before we get actual data. So the now, universe that has the most universes right. is the universe that has the most, most black, black holes. holes. Right. Now, are those? Is it a different universe, or is Probably it, or is it a residual universe? Call it what you will, but there's oh, okay. no, there's no, you, you can't, you can't go right. back and forth. Can't, can't, of course, you can't. So, by yeah. a de by our operational definition of universe, you're in another universe. You're in another universe, and don't denigrate it by calling it residual or universe light or dwarf universe. Okay, I got there's, you. All right, I, I didn't mean to, you know, <laughs> didn't mean to po the the universe. <laughs> <laughs> no telling what will happen. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> Well, that's very cool. So mathematically, it does work out. Yes, that's how it, does. it works. Mathematically. Mathematically. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. This is Eduardo. Oh, by the way, yeah. the horizon of the universe, right? Has all, this is beyond which you cannot see, Okay, has all the same properties as the event horizon of a black hole. Oh, so cool. So what, what we see is the edge of our universe that we can observe as all the same properties as the, the same mathematical properties as the event horizon of a black hole. Wow, I didn't know so that. So we would be living evidence of a universe, universe. inside a black hole. Would be. That's crazy. That's, it's, it's freaky. Yo, that is, damn. Is that, that's good. Somebody right? get me an edible. <laughs> <laughs> no, apparently you didn't need one. <laughs> this is true. This, we, we, this we, is true. We, 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 it was sufficiently fascinating <laughs> enough that I did not need I didn't think any you, assistance. Correct. And having my mind was blown. A, a no assist right. fact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. All right. This is uh, Eduardo Mancilla. Hello. This is Eduardo writing from Mexico. Right, so Eduardo the says, Eduardo. I saw a video on strange matter, but I didn't quite understand what exactly that is. Could you maybe talk a little bit about what it is and how it forms strange matter? Yeah, I saw, I'm not up on the very latest there, but there's actually good precedent for having this mysterious thing happen in our particle accelerators. And we say, we can't explain this. There must be some particle we haven't discovered yet accounting for this inexplainable stuff. Ooh. For, for this behavior of the other particles, mm -hmm. they're responding to something that we can't see and don't know how to figure out how to detect it yet. Right. So let's invent the idea of this particle. Doing that has enabled the discovery of multiple particles. Ah. Assume something's there. Right. What would its properties be to cause all the confusion that it does? Right. Let's look for it. And then look for it. And we found it. Look okay. at that. The neutrino was one such pro uh, particle. Look at that. All right. There was a reaction of particles, and at the end, the charge all worked out, but the momentum didn't add up. So we have a law uh, of conservation of momentum; it's never been violated. Right. All right. It was missing some momentum. Way to go! All the same, we got, we took account of all the particles. Right. And somebody said a particle must have taken away the momentum. I don't know where. Go look for it. And okay. it we knew it didn't have a charge, so it was called little neutral one. Little neutral one. Neutrino. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> there are things we cannot explain, dark matter, dark energy. There are these phenomena in the universe where we are kind of, I don't know, I want to say we're giving up, but we'll say, we don't know what it is, okay? Just call it anything, okay? Is it some new kind of matter? Is it strange matter? Is it, uh, and there's, all, there's a whole catalog of names for these particles that are not yet discovered. And many of them are fanciful. Wow. So it's a fun, it's like a zoo. So is that like missing spaces in the periodical chart? 
Oh, very nice. Yeah. Chuck. Okay, cool. Very nice analog there. All right. Because that's complete now. It's right. You know, on many things, you can say, we got yeah, this. We got it. Move on to the next problem. Right. But we got this. Right. But there was a time when they had to leave a space. They left like, the space. They, hey, we know something going to go there. Right. And, <laughs> you know, one of them was discovered, I forgot exactly when, um, but it was, was not discovered in nature. We had to make it. Oh, right on. Okay. Do you know the word for when you make something? Uh, manufacturer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tech. 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 Oh. Technology is you made it. Right. You didn't get it from nature. Right. Okay. We forgot that because it applies to everything today. Tech. Okay. So it's called technetium. Technetium. Yep. We made that part. We that's, made that element. That's pretty cool. So of all these hypothetical forms of matter. Right. All right. Uh, one of them has been named for a variety of quark. Okay. That we know. Quarks have fanciful names. Yeah. Okay. There's an up quark, right? A down quark, right? A strange quark, a charmed quark, okay? Well, a wine quark, <laughs> a wine quark, <laughs> Qu quark, oh quark, 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 oh, quark, 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 okay, okay. quark. <laughs> so, what, and the quarks make up our our um, nuclear particles, right? Okay, so so there's an up down top bottom strange charmed, okay? Okay, so the up down are the quarks that make up protons and neutrons. Okay. They have heavier components in the universe that we find in accelerators, but we don't encounter them every day. So all the particles that we know and love have versions at, that exist at a, no, a higher energy level. Yes. So our quarks are up and down. The next level quarks are top and bottom mm -hmm. because they're pairs. And the next level quarks are, are strange and charmed. Gotcha. There's three levels of, of, of electrons as well, okay. three different kinds of force carriers. So this is what we call the standard model. Yeah, we chatted about that with Brian Green. With Brian Green right? yeah. It's been hypothesized that the strange quark under certain conditions of pressure temperature would manifest and be the predominant particle in the object. Okay. So it'd be strange matter possibly making a strange star. Gotcha. Yeah, but don't overinterpret the word strange. It's just a word to describe a variety of quark. The word quark mm -hmm. comes from James Joyce's Finnegan's Wake. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. How so? Because we found that there were three quarks in the middle of the proton and neutron. Right. Okay. Three. And there's some rhyme in Finnegan's Wake that says, three quarks for muster mark. And so Murray Gell-Mann, who's one of the original physicists to think about what the particles are in, in, the, in the tiny, tiny in, stuff. In the tiny, tiny particles. Uh, he had that phrase in his head, and then he says three quarks for, for muster mark. And so it was th three, because right. the number three, the three matched. Three matched. Okay? Except there's more than three. There's like, you know, yeah. with the two varieties times three, there's six. Six kinds of quarks. So the numbers in the end don't match up. Well, he, that's, didn't. That's he, didn't, he didn't know. He, he didn't know. He just started. He, did, yeah. he just he was, he was began just, the yeah. investigation. Oh, anyway. But the, the word quark stayed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a dumb name. <laughs> All right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't say what does it look like, right? That's true. I mean, in my field, we see a nebula that looks like a tarantula. We call it the tarantula nebula. Right. We see another nebula that looks like North America. It's called the North American nebula. That's so crazy. If you see a quark, what are you going to say it looks like? Well, there is nothing that that's what I'm saying. There's nothing particle, to say. It's there's look, nothing. It's a, uh, you can't. Right. Right. Oh, that's cool. All okay. Right. I take it back. We do have that problem. Muster Mark. If you ask me, how big is the universe? Well, how big is the universe? It's as big as, end of sentence. There you go. <laughs> Because how could you know <laughs> right. how? Right. right, right. You can't. There's it nothing, is the biggest. You can't right. compare it. Yeah, there's nothing to compare. I can tell you how many feet will go across it, but that's still doesn't there's, make. There's, it. there's no. There's no reference. There's no reference. For it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good.